ignorance isn't necessarily bliss, but knowledge certainly brings fears which may never trouble the ignorant. A perfect summer day's motorcycle ride can end abruptly for the all-knowing rider, just as for one innocent of Schnell Loop and Otto cycle. Being both builder and rider raises anxiety to a whole new level. A 308 mile round trip in 2016, attending the Panther Owners Club's 40th National Rally, is special for us not only because we were at the club's first rally in 1977, when Angie was a sweet young thing and I was her oily oik. It is special too because we are riding a heavyweight outfit created for the event. I came out of hibernation in March and noted the forthcoming event in July. A discussion with Angie gained my assurance that there need be no camping involved, but with her agreement to attend together by Panther, there was still one piece of swarf in the grease. The outfit was long gone and our heavyweight Panther ran solo. Angie used to ride on her own account here on a 1955 Model 100, arriving home from the 17th National Rally in 1993. Now, like sleeping in fields, pillion riding over long distances brings too many discomforts. Could I assemble an outfit from sketchbook to road in three months? A delve into personal steel stock was followed by a session to order missing materials, and so began another triumph of enthusiasm over common sense. We set out across the lowlands of Cambridgeshire and Lincolnshire in the east of England with that thrilling mix of delight laced with apprehension. For the first miles, my every fibre is tuned to the panther's needs, hearing its response to throttle and ignition settings, feeling how the clutch bites and gears select at the caress of my right boot. The settling in process brings greater equanimity as the Panther does exactly what 40 years familiarity with the model leads us to expect. Our first bike from the P&M stable, a 1960 Model 120, was the outfit which hooked us on the mark and its club. In the 1970s, winter maintenance was carried out indoors, and the outfit, with Busmar Devon sidecar or tradesman's box, was our transport for work and school runs, domestic shopping trips, and the collection of building materials for house restoration. And it was our magic carpet throughout the UK for rallies and holidays, hauling us, two children, a massive frame tent and all our gear. Here, as editor of the club magazine Sloper, I'm loading copies into the sidecar for a run to the post office.
We are travelling light today with weekend clothes, toothbrushes and a spare magneto. At Bayard's Leap Café by the A17 we pull in for coffee and exchange enthusiasms with some guys on flat tank AJS and BSA Gold Star. Enjoy the rest of your ride. We will. Thank you. <laughs> Refreshed, we remount, crossing the Great North Road at Newark in Nottinghamshire and heading northwest. Our final destination is Silkstone in Yorkshire, but the plan is for an easy ride to stay with former colleague Peter Watson and his wife Sarah in Sheffield. Peter was founding editor of Classic Bike magazine in 1978. Many years ago I picked up a P&M sidecar chassis designed in the 1950s to fit straight onto their heavyweights. Rusted beyond useful life it was bought for the Armstrong suspension unit and the 8 inch hub which is shared by all three wheels on the later heavyweight Panthers. The chassis would be good for a pattern a friend had given me some heavy galvanised tube from an abandoned roll cage build and I had a 12 ton hydraulic bender and a MIG welder. Project sidecar was on. A proper man referred to in our household is one who has a qualification in the task he's undertaking. If I warrant the term it is as a welder fabricator and though long ago retired, I find myself in my element here. With all other considerations set aside, save eating and sleeping, I cut, grind, drill and weld my way to a basic chassis in just a month. One or two adaptations are made. The P&M version of the swinging arm bracket has a square cut plate meeting the tube and leaving triangular holes to collect water with obvious consequences. Our original chassis suffered a disastrous collapse which had us riding in ever decreasing circles and scoring a DNF on the VMCC Chiltern Road Trial in 1989. Progress on the build was steady and on April the 1st, I bolted my replica chassis to the swinging arm Panther for a trial on the drive. We break for lunch near Chesterfield, Derbyshire and set a course for our overnight stop, planning to arrive in time for tea.
Peter, alerted by the panther's distinctive beat, comes out to welcome us on the outfit which, a week earlier, picked up the Theme Machine Award at VMCC Founders Day. I, we're oh, here, spot, spot on. We just, you know, found oh. the way. Lovely. Hey. Oh. Wow. The winner. Yeah. yeah. The winner. <laughs> hey, how about that? That's pretty good. Oh wow. So, a cup of tea. Yeah. Yes. As long as it's coffee. Oh, <laughs> With paint applied to the new chassis, I was ready to begin work on the sidecar body. And if your delight is the road and the ride. You may prefer to skip my blethering, fast forward to the 15 minute mark, crank up your woofers and enjoy the panther beat as we tackle some Yorkshire inclines. Squirrelled away for use at a later date was a copy of this all steel sidecar body design from OEC, an independent thinking manufacturer in the P&M tradition. I began to plan something similar, transferring notebook sketches to a full-size drawing with Angie sitting on an old Reliant Robin seat. Next puzzle was how to bend 19mm steel tube without the proper tool. My somewhat unofficial method employed a plumber's Hillmore copper tube bender with additional leverage. It worked better than it deserved to, and by marking the tube at intervals, I found that I could tweak in stages for more gentle bends as well. I added a plywood floor and a temporary baffle for alignment of the sides. The frame was skinned with 20 gauge cold rolled steel sheet, puddle welded at the uprights and corner joints before sanding and filling for paintwork. There was upholstery and a hood to create, but we were on the road by mid-June, a full month before the rally. I dropped Angie in a local ditch to film the complete outfit in action for the first time. After a convivial evening, sustained by Peter's delicious two cheese and sorrel tart, we awoke to a fine Saturday morning, the panther waiting below. Yes, right. Oh, you're I'm you're now on film. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll keep in touch. Yeah, we and I'll and I'll send you a copy of the video when oh, it's done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Should be a few panthers on it. Wouldn't <laughs> be surprised. Though more accustomed to riding the flat fenlands, the outfit seemed to thrive on the additional work in its native Yorkshire, thundering up the long climbs with gusto.
Unfortunately, we neglected to inform our satellite navigator James in the sidecar of the incompatibility of Panthers and motorways, and so had to veto his suggestions and break out the paper map. Not putting this on the M1 again, is it? We rolled onto the site at mid-morning to join scores of other motorcycles made in Cleckheaton by Felon and Moore. Join that line up there. Official figures later put the total present at one hundred and sixty from the firm's early days in 1904 to the last produced in 1966. Organisation by Dibbo and Julie and their team was as ever exceptional. We talked to friends, old and new, and probably missed nearly as many among the hordes. A wander down the informal lineup gives an idea of the scale of this event and the variety of Panthers present. Bye. 
back with the answer to the question, that. Hopefully, yeah. Members were catered for and entertained with silly games and live music. On Sunday morning we returned from our digs to chat with more old friends and say our goodbyes. Remember John, I saw don't you? you? Yes, yeah, I didn't good. recognize you. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, we, oh, we, yeah, right. we, we did meet up right. yesterday, right at the end. Yeah. Yeah, and stop that. You can walk from here, can't I you? Yeah. <laughs> I think most people are packing up now. Oh. All right. I'm earning my bag of sweeties. Uh huh. So there's a president promised me a bag of sweeties if I filled uh, the bag. Oh, excellent. That's good. Oh, yeah. we, we saw the site tag yesterday and thought, that looks very. <laughs> yes, it's it's a I don't know a sort of mental image you know of, of 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 the times really I suppose and plus my own little flights of fancy um, and the, and this is practical the, the hood the hood uh, stores oh, yeah, oh, inside yeah. there yeah. Yeah. separate yeah. separate so you both well. very well thank <laughs> you yes yes. Ah. Yes, and you? Very well, thank you. Good, well. good. We, uh, you can bring the car with the trailer with yeah. you, Good. The wife and the dog. Oh, right, yes, and good. We can bring the dog. It turns out it's been great for us because all the kids have been taking a walk. Oh, right, lovely. Yeah, yeah. It's been a good weekend. Yeah. Fantastic weather. Not, not what I thought was going to happen. No, happened. no. But uh, yeah, it's been so, so odd. But last weekend we did... Um, Founders Day, you know, and the uh, yes, POC had advertised. a lot. Yeah, and uh, that was that much the same. Yeah. It was hot, it well, was like this. The, well, I thought it was hotter than this. Right, right. okay. But it was, certainly wasn't as hot as it was in the week. No. And it was dry, really, really pleasant. So do you live nearby then? Uh, the well, Founders Day. Well, we rolled up this morning. Oh, oh, oh okay. I went out camping, no. we did no. B&B, oh, we were right. there yesterday. Oh. Yeah. Oh, sorry about this. <laughs> I yeah. thought you maybe lived here. And you no, know, no, this is no. This was this was the deal, really. When when we saw it was the fortieth, and we thought we really should do it, because we I were at the no first. <laughs> uh, I've got a little bit of. Uh, you, if you if you saw the if you saw the tide car yesterday, you will have seen that. That's oh, from, the, from the from the from our visit to the first the national, first. without not with this outfit with a with a. Uh, there's another one we had pictures from it from 77 yeah, and yeah from was it held? that was at that was at um uh, hampton load which is near bridge north shropshire uh -huh. the very first so that's that heo was our first that's our first our original panther which we'd uh -huh. only had about a year then because uh -huh. i've got a magazine somewhere with you and an article on you and you were building a house or something yes and you used it for Okay. Transporting all oh, your, right. your, yes. your yeah. building materials yeah. and stuff. Was yeah. that one? That was the that's bike. It. Yes, that's it. Yes. Yeah, we've got some incredible pictures from then. With it, uh, and it was just well, I did build a box later, didn't I? But uh, originally it was this. Uh, oh. It was a um, Busmar child adult, and we had floorboards, you know, tucked down, mm -hmm. back seat out, and. Uh, and that had big sink there on top of Benjamin's. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Yes, <laughs> kitchen sink. Oh yes, yeah. I don't yeah, know my yeah. yesterday. And it was fantastic. Yes, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I wasn't going to bother because it's such a nice day just for that. Cheerio, well, Gordon. Is 
this a tool, two stroke tool kit? Six, six spare plugs. I've a lot more in there. Have you, right? The six is enough. There's a lot more in there, aren't It must be reliable. I used to have a box of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Have you worn out your flag riding here? The second, second one. The second one. Uh, well, uh... This group from Finland is preparing for their long ride home over five or six days, covering some 800 miles. Just some of the many panthers present from overseas. Where are you, where are you going now today? Tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Just tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Simple pick, way. Pick up the yeah. pick up the ferry. Yep. Good. We should be something like six o'clock in the barracks. Uh, oh yeah. Or yeah. So there's yeah. plenty of time. Yeah. Good. Yes, it's quite an easy run. Yeah, course, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hardly get oil hot. No, but then uh, you, a lot of riding the other end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With our night stop just eight miles away, we can afford to relax. But we take an evening ride to the top of the Woodhead Pass, which crosses the Pennines some 450 metres above sea level. Stark contrast to the three metres of home, where we will head next day. From our hotel room, we can see the outfit. And there was nothing anticlimactic about our last day's ride, the panther with everything still to prove. Rolling south after a fuel fill and snack in Gainsborough, we were approaching the city of Lincoln when the engine stuttered, came back for a moment and then died completely. I made a perfect dead stick landing in a potholed lay-by across the road. Our conversation picks up the story. I could see that lay-by, I thought we'll probably just about get coast in there. And it's a, 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 you know, oil on the points or water or some mag thing, I would say, coming and going like that. Are we going to have to put the other mag in? Well, we might have to, but, but I, I would have thought, I don't know, I'll have a look. Um, I would have thought a points thing, perhaps. You can sit in here and work it from here. You know? <laughs> no, you're you're fine. Stay where you are. Uh, you know, points closed up, possibly. Let's see if they're opening and closing. The way it came back in, you know, it's not likely to be a winding because I wouldn't expect it to do that. No, it's opening okay. I don't, they don't look far out. It's supposed to be about 12 thou. It looks about that sort of amount. So I don't think they've closed up. Tools out. Give it a once over. It hasn't had a hint no. at any time, you know, not a single misfire until that moment. So it's out, you know, that like that seems like something uh, quite, yes. I'll whip the plug out for a start. I think of that uh, thing we had coming back from a national many years ago when the, the bit of carburetor went through and uh, hit, hit the points, plug points, closed them up. But that, 
doing that, that wouldn't uh, that wouldn't go back again. And this obviously has. Still a bit warm. Do you see something between the points, or is that my imagination? I think there is. Don't, don't touch it. Is I can see it from some angle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I thought it might be my eyes. Uh, well, we'll treat it to a brand new plug. Cool. You put everything back and trust that that is the problem. Well, that's the worry, isn't it? Yeah. You know, but I don't think you can do anything about that at this stage, really. Uh, you know, little bits of... Little bits of piston. There's no... You know, when you think what we've done, I mean, we've been cruising at 50, and uh, it's... Uh, there's no no discoloration. It went by. That one's the pet then. Yes. Firing. In spite of that one minor stumble, we judge our ride to the 40th Panther Owners Club National Rally a great success. If I was completely honest, I'd admit an experimental spark plug replacement with one of a much hotter grade, which was forgotten until it began to sweat metal and cried enough. But we got away with it, so I'll keep it to myself and attend to one last task, rescuing my navigator from that ditch. <laughs>